You rang, belated. Oh, Parker, there you are. I've just finished wrapping presents for Jeff and the boys. Rightio, belady. I took the liberty of bringing a little celebratory tipple. Oh, Parker, well done. Sherry, my favourite. And I see you've bought two glasses. Well, begging your pardon, belady. But seeing as it's Christmas at all. Oh, of course, Parker. I do love Christmas. And it's such fun for all the children. Do you remember opening all those wonderful presents on Christmas morning? How time flies. Regent Street. Butterscotch. Oh. What should that be worth me? Oh, don't even think about it. Have you organized your outfit, Lady Penelope? Of course, Alan. This is the finishing touch. Wow, Lady Penelope. I can't even choose which tie to wear. It's so much easier when you've had lots of practice. And, of course, a certain sense of style to match. Well, I'm going to have to make a choice soon, or I'll end up spending Christmas in my uniform. Quite right, Alan. But remember, style isn't only about what to wear. It's more about what not to wear. This week, we've been casting our eyes over three very special little ladies. Yes, these are no ordinary girls. They live in a fantasy world all of their own. You mentioned the word Barbie, and what does everyone say? She was tall and busty. Oh, yeah, she had this bust, you know, that that's kind of sells forth before her. Barbie seemed more glamorous. It was that American element. She was very much a California girl, whereas Cindy had a face shaped like a pie tin. More girls could probably relate to that doll. I found Cindy rather freakish looking. Than perhaps the more voluptuous figures from America. She had, like, a very long, thin body and then this huge, bloated head. It was like she had elephantitis. Ah, Pippa was the smaller version of Cindy and Barbie. She's very delicate, very small. You can put her in, a, in your pocket, take her to school and have lots of fun with her. Small and stumpy. She was sort of like the Kylie Minogue uh, of the doll world. I Suze, I sort of think we need to go way back to the beginning with these girls. I totally agree. It's not about where they are now. It's about where they've come from. Barbie's a materialistic girl, let's face it. I mean, anyone with that amount of shoes, she could give Imelda Marcos a run for her money. She's blamed excesses on the American dream. She's kind of buried in the 80s, and it's like all this gold and glitz. Someone needs to take this girl aside and say, hey, you know, less is more. That's proof enough. Yep, that's good. Barbie, <clears throat> I thought you were my fashion icon until I saw this wardrobe. It's just an 80s nightmare. Look at these colours. Now, we know you're an Essex girl at heart. This is a zoo here because everything is furry. In fact, Barbie, was it fancy dress? Now, I think this is the one I want to see in the mirror. It's like Vivian Westwood on acid. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. in the mirror. <laughs> Susanna, I am totally speechless. It's just the clashingness. Barbie, it's cut too high for your huge tits. What is this obsession with mammaries, you know, and this doll? I mean, it's just ridiculous. I didn't really know, perhaps until I was 14 or 15, about how apparently if you had those measurements, you'd be dead. I love those women in the States who have all the operations to try and get Barbie's measurements, and then they just, they just accidentally die in the last stage. And, oh, that's 
not as fun a story as I was hoping it to be. I think at the moment the Cindy's a little bit too heavy, perhaps. She could do with, you know, losing a bit of weight. You've been around for such a long time now, or maybe I could leave you, but I don't know how. Cindy, I have to say, I don't remember you as being quite so frumpy, and the wardrobe is so dull. Why get a beautiful velvet coat in brown? Your ankles aren't the thinnest, darling, and they do nothing but make you look like an elephant foot. So we're going to get rid of this, honey. And I just don't know what trip you were on when you bought that. I think we Gotta should see go. that one in the mirror. Okay, that's going to be shown in the mirror. I get a feeling when I look at you, wherever you go now, I want to be there too. Cindy, this dress wears you. It is horrible neck curtains made into a dress, let's be honest. You look like a hot air balloon that's going to take off. Get down on you've seen Pippi, you'll have noticed she's a little petite. Well, I'm really hoping that Trini Susanna can give her a brand new look, right spanking up to date. Something really, really modern and swish. Susanna, it's just this disgusting mustardy yellow orange. And Pippa, it's not unlike the tragedy of your hair, which is like the hair of a foxtail. So it looks like it's more been dipped in nicotine. This item here is the epitome of that disgusting colour. Can you see that really close up? It goes with the horrible frill on your disgusting dress. We've got to see it in the mirror. Do you want to get out? That was my absolute fantasy life with Pippa because she had the most fantastic apartment. It had orange and brown carpet and a bit of green. I've done my best to replicate it in adult life, but I don't seem to have succeeded. Come on in. Can you just see how this mustard does not go with your complexion, Pippa? And the gold with the mustard is too spangly. We've got to get you away from this colour. It's doing nothing for you, sweetheart. I mean, no one suits that colour. <laughs> oh, that colour. Their best friends might not tell them what they really look like. But we're not their best friends. And we will. This is now the positive moment, rules to help you dress beautifully. Now, Barbie, don't be frightened of sparkle during daytime hours. Barbie's always been a blonde, you know, and I think she's getting past it. She's going to look like Bette Lynch soon. Go for it, Barbie. All right, Cindy, you can wear a little puff sleeve because you've got very skinny arms and your boobs aren't that big so you can afford to wear a high neck. Quite a big head so you can take a big fur collar. Totally agree with that, Trini. Now, Pippa, you've gone very trendy in the worst possible way, so we want you to wear chic, sophisticated colours, Pippa. You can get away with a polo neck because your tits aren't too big. Those had to be the toughest three challenges we've come across yet. I mean, three more difficult women would be hard to meet. But look at the result. It just shows what colour can do for a woman. Gorgeous. Exquisite. Exquisite. Wow, well, Barbie looks fabba dabba doo, doesn't she? She's lost her blonde bimbo locks and gone for this far more sophisticated two-tone shade of brown and mahogany. She's gone one extreme to the other, hasn't she? But it kind of works yeah, it in a sort of share kind of way. Exactly. The fringe makes it look slightly like a wig, but yeah, yeah, better than blonde. Maybe it is a wig. Maybe her blonde hair is under there. Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd have believed it? Cindy's back in flares again, and they're looking really good. They're very trendy, and it's it's what everyone's wearing at the moment. Brilliant. But Cindy, what have you done on your hair? It's huge. Your body is tiny. I dread to think what you've been up to. Mm, I think it's not to do with nature, Susanna. Cindy, I think we better take a closer look at the potential sky. She's a bit stubborn. Mm. Oh, Pippa, because that hair 
I secretly said to her as an aside, you got to cut it. And she would be mm. having none of it. I can't believe the transformation. She really does look like a different girl. Her hair is so much better with the highlights. I'm glad she didn't go with the haircut. I, I really do like Pippa's hair length. And the trouser suit is, is really quite wonderful. I love it. It looks great on her. Are they going to stick to it? We'll have to see. Mm. We will. At International Rescue, we are trained to deal with every medical emergency, and you're never too young to learn. So on Christmas Day, you're all very excited. You haven't got time to sit down and read a book of rules. The beauty of operation is it is simple. There's something so unsound about operation. Basically, you're operating on someone without anaesthetic. It's terrifying. Operation was probably responsible for transforming quite a lot of well-adjusted, ordinary children into nervous wrecks. It buzzed again. It's the most nerve-wracking game you can have. That's the way I used to quite like playing it with my mum and dad on a Christmas afternoon after they'd had a couple of drinks because, by golly, they didn't have steady hands. If you had a steady hand and a warm heart, oh my God, could you be the victor amongst others who are a little bit more nervous? Hang on a sec, get back a bit, my thing's caught. I beg your pardon, Miss Stephenson. Oh! Hurts a bit, does it? Just a whimsy. There's two kinds of approach with operation. It's that I don't give a damn. You just go in there and you get one out and go, you see? No, this isn't going to hurt. <laughs> or the real steady hand where you... <laughs> I think it might have brought on some sort of stress thing in young people. Like Tourette's, when you put in the thing, oh, on, and you, oh, you get a little squeal. You like your mother said, what's going on up here? Dad's like he's playing operation again. He's just playing operation, don't worry. Son, it's all right, just calm down. Why do you come here? In the advert, the mother comes down the stairs and literally thinks that her children are operating on another human being. <laughs> it's my turn to operate. Operate? The fact that she, she really did believe for a moment that her children were performing such ghastly activity, I think it's a very bad sign on her part. Starring in the advertisement was Samantha Gates, a child supermodel. I do remember this whole day of lots of laughing and joking and saying, and, and lots of kind of, right, everybody, laugh now. I also seem to remember that I think for a lot of the scenes, we, they had to take the batteries out, because it was actually really difficult to get the bits out of the body without setting it off, because the game was actually quite difficult. <laughs> It's Operation, the mad doctor's game. <laughs> if she was like, what, five or six when she was first in the ad, then certainly when she's 15 or right, after 10 years, it's going to get a bit wearing. Take out his spare ribs for 100 pounds. <laughs> oh, you'll never do that. Don't touch your sides. I literally walk to school and have to run the gauntlet of people yelling, take out his funny bone. Here goes his funny bone. You need a very steady hand. I did it. That's 200 pounds for me. Can I have a go? It was an ad that haunted me for years and years because they ran it every Christmas. <laughs> it was really quite embarrassing. Hi. Very American operation. It had like a Charlie horse. What the hell is a Charlie horse? He's got a butterfly in his stomach. That's a horse called Charlie. And you had writer's cramp, that was a pen. And didn't you have like a spanner? I think also as a child you think, Oh, have I really got something that looks like that in me? Bread basket. What the hell is bread basket? There's no spleen in the operation game, which I'm furious about, but they do. They say, oh, we've had a terrible accident. We've managed to remove this spleen. And everyone goes, <laughs> but what's that for? You never, never got a buzz on the broken heart. Taking out his Adam's apple, really not advisable. What sort of medical practice is this teaching our young children? The chap might even live, providing you took the right one out, of course. <laughs> God knows how it influenced a generation of doctors. 
do people complain about me having no bedside manner? Possibly this is why. And I also felt it gave children a very simplistic view of, of medical science. Uh, it really isn't that easy to cure a broken heart. Bye.